What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of GH. Um, first of all, I honestly don't think Franco's... I mean, Franco could have been the one to put that... Whatever he put into Ryan's um, tube or whatever. I don't know if Franco did it. I mean, I felt like it was too obvious, though. But he did have gloves on, so... Franco could have done it. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't put it past him. Like, whoever put that needle in his IV, it could have been Franco. Could have been Finn. But it could have been anybody at that point. There's plenty of people in that town who don't like him and wouldn't mind seeing him oft. Um, But I like how everybody came, you know, basically the Ash- Ashford family all came together as a family. To make sure that Stella, that Jordan got the uh, kidney. I felt like it was too easy for her to get that kidney, though. <laughs> like, Ryan, he just got sick and tired of everybody coming in his room preaching to him and, you know, going on and on about how he's going to hell and, oh, he's despicable and he should give up the kidney. Like, and now Stella done came in there preaching and he got sick of that. Ryan was like, you know what? Let me just give y'all this kidney so y'all can leave me alone. (laughs) Ryan was so over it. I don't blame him for being hesitant, though, to sign those papers because Ryan ain't no dummy. He was like, what's to stop anybody from killing him while he on the operating table? You know what I'm saying? Like, or doing something to him or messing with his anesthesia or something like that to make him go into cardiac arrest. (sighs) He had a point, though. Ryan really did have a point. I mean, any one of them could do something to him. But, you know, Finn basically let him know, like, I'm going to treat you how I treat every other patient. But Ryan was not for the BS today. Like, he just got sick and tired of everybody coming in his room. But he keep talking about unconditional release or whatever. Ryan knew he crazy. Ryan know he crazy because you already know nobody's letting you out of prison. There's no way of you getting out of these charges. You've committed... Attempted murders, murder. Ain't nobody letting you out of no prison. He knew that. He knew that. He could bargain all he want to, but he know it wasn't gonna happen. That that's for that's for sure. Ryan knew wasn't nobody gonna let him out, but Stella did promise him that um she would speak on his behalf at his court hearing or whatever, at his arraignment or whatever, she would speak on his behalf for giving Jordan the kidney. I think if she speaks on his behalf, I think that'll take the death penalty away. But he's definitely going away for the rest of his life, though. I just think it'll keep him off. Her testimony may keep him off death row, you know, because he could be sentenced to to death, you know, if convicted, which I'm pretty sure he will be convicted. So her testimony and the fact that he did something charitable, he did something nice. You know, he saved a life for once instead of taking one. That actually might go a long way with the judge, you know, as far as not putting him, you know, giving him execution. So that may work in his favor, but he's definitely going away for the rest of his life, though. Um, I did like the TJ and Jordan scenes, you know, he was just letting her know, like, he needs her around, you know, to see him become a doctor, to be around for his future children, You know, and, you know, that's a sad feeling to think that a parent ain't going to be around for all of that, you know. So I felt bad for him, but at least he know now she's going to be sticking around. Thank God and thank Stella, you know, for going to there and being there to do (sighs) it. I'm going to be honest, like, I'm mega tired today. Like, these last two days have been busy, busy, busy. I've literally been up since like six, maybe five o'clock this morning. Um, it's been a busy long day today. Yesterday was another long day, so I am like exhausted. So I'm trying to get through this review as quickly as humanly possible. But um I literally just got back in the house probably like ten minutes ago. Um the first time I've been in the house since seven o'clock this morning. <laughs> but uh anyway. Thank God for Stella though. She finally kinda got through the Ryan, even though she didn't. But, you know, he just did it because he was annoyed. But all in all, it's a good day. She got her kidney, so she's getting her kidney, so that's good. Um, I definitely don't think Franco... Franco probably did it, though, because deep down, he's still pissed about, you know, Kiki's death as well. So I wouldn't blame him if he did do something to um, 
Ryan's IV. I wouldn't blame him. I couldn't blame them. You know, he took away somebody who was full of life, who had so much life left to live, and he took it without a care in the world, and he still doesn't care. You know, so I would be just as upset as Franco and Ava. Like, I don't blame them for their anger. Should they be taking the law into their own hands? Probably not. But then again, I can understand it. It doesn't make it right, but I understand, you know, totally, totally understand it. Who wouldn't feel that way? You know, who wouldn't feel rage from somebody who just so casually takes a life and doesn't care that they took that life? You know, a life of somebody who had a long life to live and you don't care nothing about that and you're even taunting them about it. That would, you know, make me even more mad. The mere fact that he was taunting Franco when Franco went to see him and stuff like that. He didn't care. Even when he was talking to Ava, he didn't care. That would send you over the edge. So I can't blame them for wanting to do bodily harm to him. You know, you got plenty of other people that want to do some harm to him, too. So can't blame them. Um, so anyway, the scenes with Sonny and Jocelyn and Carly was pretty uh, nice, I guess. Um, she got to feel the baby moving and stuff like that. I mean, I understand as a parent, you know, Carly wants to be there. For her kids, you know, she wants to really be there for Jocelyn, but she just doesn't know how to help her. I feel like, you know, there's nothing Carly can really do to help her. You know, just being there and listening to her, I feel is more helpful. You know, that's that's you. You being there is helping her. Jack's being there is helping her. You know, she's not going to get over this quickly. I don't think she ever will. You know, at some point she's going to start moving on with her life, but that doesn't mean she has to start doing it today. You know, whenever she's ready to move on, she can move on, you know, but she's never going to forget Oscar. That's for sure. You know, you never really forget your first true love. You know what I'm saying? Especially when they pass away. You know, that's a memory that's going to be etched in you for the rest of your life. Um, I really didn't care for the scenes where they went to the grave to go see Morgan and stuff like that. I really didn't care. I'm going to be totally honest. I didn't care for those scenes. Um, but. You know, they Sonny was basically saying, you know, Morgan would have liked Oscar and stuff like that and telling him about the new baby and whatever, I guess. Um, so anyway, I did like the scene with Jocelyn and Cameron. Um, they're bonding over the guitar and stuff like that, you know, because Cameron plays the guitar. He started playing it more when Oscar got sick, which I thought was, you know, nice, I guess. You know, Oscar, I guess, inspired him to pick up the guitar again because he hasn't played it, I guess, since seventh grade detention, of course. Um, I could definitely see her moving on with Cameron at some point, maybe in the future. I could definitely see the two of them together because she has good chemistry with Cameron. She definitely does. Jocelyn, you know, but she's going to take her time. And that's what I hope for, that she takes her time. Um, I will say this because I've been wanting to mention this. I just didn't get a chance to talk about it yesterday, but that scene was sunny yesterday, whining to Michael about Jack's being in town and how he's upset that he's back in town. Sonny, cry me a river and shut up. I am so tired of him whining about Jax. At the end of the day, you do not own poor Charles. You are not King Tut. You're not King Joffy Jofa. You don't own poor Charles. You're not the ruler. You know what I mean? Like. He's in town for business and his daughter. Mind your business. Jocelyn is his child, not yours. Mind your business. Stop whining about it. Ooh, uh, Jax is in town. Ooh, uh, I can't stand him. Well, get over it. Tell Carly to, you know, have Jax and Jocelyn meet somewhere other than your house then. If you have such an issue, you know what I mean? Like, hush your mouth. Don't nobody care about your opinion on it. It's like, Sonny just irks me sometimes. Like, all his whining. Like the man has a right to see a child and she's going through something. So she, he needs to be there. Um, anyway, I enjoyed the Kim and Drew scenes the, you know, I can see how hard it is for Kim. You know, it's hard for her to spread her son's ashes because that's pretty much her final goodbye to him, you know? And she's very emotional because she's, you know, it's for years, for the last 15, 16 years, it's just been her and Oscar. Now she don't have them no more. You know, so it's hard for her to move on with her life, you know, and the same thing I said about Jocelyn, it's going to take time, a lot of time. It's going to take even more time for Kim because that was her only child. You know, so that hurt is not going away anytime soon. Hell, it ain't going away ever, you know, and I feel equally bad for Drew because he just found his son not too long ago. 
and barely had that much time with him. And now he's gone, you know, and now they got to move on and figure out a way to move on with their life. And it's not going to be easy. They have a long road ahead. I could definitely see Drew and Kim end up hooking up. I could definitely see that. Two grieving parents, you know, getting overly emotional, especially seeing us out there out of the country together. I could see some some going down. Definitely. I wouldn't be mad at it. I mean, I kind of like her with Julian, but, you know, she got chemistry with. uh, She got chemistry with Drew, too. But I just want to know what the writers plan on doing with Kim and Drew at this point. Like, I mean, it's a lot of creative ideas they can come up with, but it's all about being creative. Like, you have to think. You know what I mean? I can think of quite a few things that they can do with Kim and Drew to better acclimate, you know, to keep them around. Because I would definitely, I won't mind, you know, having Drew and Kim around and stuff like that. But her only tie to the canvas really was Oscar. So without Oscar, what do you do with Kim? But I can think of quite a few things to do with her. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much the entire episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about today's episode. I will see y'all all later. Peace.